My name is John Herbst. I am the director of the Dinu Patrizio Eurasia Center at the Atlanta Council. And I have the honor to be here with um, Madame Chairwoman uh, Anna Fotiga. Uh, and we are here to talk about Ukraine and Russia and the European Union. And Madam Chairwoman, I would appreciate your thoughts on maintaining sanctions, EU sanctions on the Kremlin for its failure to implement its obligations under the Minsk Agreement. Well, for, uh, from the very beginning, after Russian uh, aggression on Ukraine, and in particular after the, the illegal annexation of Crimea, I feel that this unity of Western world is absolutely essential, that we need to, to keep sanctions. We know from many uh, meetings, expert pieces of expertise, that these sanctions are effective. They work simply, and it's uh, the, the reason why Russia is willing to come to table and, and start starting discussions in, in, on, on uh, foreign policy issues. That, that is extremely important. No, you're right, sanctions are very important. Uh, according to Russian officials and the IMF, those sanctions are costing Russian GNP 1 to 1.5 percent per year. So it's an even greater impact on standard of living. So they are very important as a way to uh, punish Russia for its aggression in Ukraine. First of all, the aim of sanction was to, to, to punish Russian authorities. That's right, that's correct. And uh, to some, uh, some extent compromise the, 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 the goals uh, of authorities vis-à-vis -vis its own population, first of all. And I must say, I, I do have my own experience, because under martial law in Poland, we who supported the, the, the anti-communist opposition, we were for sanctions, because we, we were absolutely sure that sanctions were the reason why communists started to rethink their behavior and eventually wanted to... to, 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 to to move back. Uh, I agree, and you were right to point out these sanctions were designed to uh, punish the Russian leadership, but also to persuade Russia to implement its Minsk obligations and withdraw its troops and its weapons and stop its yeah. war against Ukraine. Uh, do you believe that sanctions are going to be renewed this winter, which is good news? Do you think that the prospects are good for sanctions to be renewed in the summertime? Well, I, yes, I think that sanctions are to be renewed uh, this time in, in December, but uh, of course what, uh, what's going to happen uh, in, in the middle of, of next year, we are not sure. I hope that we'll be able to, to, to um, find unity. But we have to, to foresee also positive uh, outcome of, of this process, meaning that Russia wants to withdraw from Ukraine to put pressure on, on uh, uh, so-called uh, authorities or, or uh, better say uh, separatists who, 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 who wage war on, on, on the own uh, population with the help uh, of Russia. Of course, there is an issue of, of Crimea. I, I have uh, long-standing relations uh, with Crimean Tatars, and their situation is really grave. It, it is uh, just su such a misery for so many centuries, people deprived of, of their home. And when they started to, to gain hope, with all their problems uh, under under Ukraine and the time of independent Ukraine, because this country was impoverished uh, simply, they, they support uh, Ukraine. They are very much for integration, territorial integration. They, they are, they used to be members of Verkhovna Rada, so, so they are patriots. Like some time ago in Poland, uh, many Crimean 
Tatars used to be very patriotic and also fighting for Poland's independence. There it, that is why this sentiment. You know, the Crimean Tatars are very strongly in favor of Crimea being part yeah. of Ukraine. Yeah. And they are deeply opposed to the Russian annexation. Yeah. But, but that, that raises another issue. Uh, as you've said before, it's sometimes hard to keep the problem of Russia's war in Ukraine on the agenda in Europe. Yet in Europe, everyone celebrated when President Obama uh, restored good, econo good economic, excuse me, diplomatic relations with Cuba. Yet there are people in Europe who pay a blind eye to the fact that Russia is fighting a war against its neighbor. How do you explain this? Well, it seems that uh, surely we, 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 we used to speak about uh, European Union in these terms, that somehow we are able to focus on one thing at a time, one issue, one important uh, problem to, to, to be solved, international problem. When it is Ukraine after annexation, let us focus on Ukraine. But when uh, uh, Syria is uh, in agenda, we let us forget about this. Surely the situation is not so bad, because somehow uh, within diplomacies, within institutions, we are able to, to keep the right track. We are talking about sanctions, oh, yeah. that is most important. Uh, but also support for Ukraine, uh, uh, also uh, standing by this country and Ukrainian society in reforms, uh, uh, and uh, enabling Ukraine to and the society to come closer to, to, to Western democracies, also in terms of movement. We are for visa-liberalization. I agree with you that despite all of the complaints and the ugly process, Europe has remained united in maintaining sanctions on Russia for its aggression in Ukraine and to persuade Russia to meet its Minsk obligations. Uh, Chancellor Merkel has been very important to this unity. And uh, she, of course, there's going to be an election next year. In Germany, we just had an election in the United States. Do you think that the victory of Donald Trump makes it harder to maintain sanctions, unity on sanctions in, in the EU? Well, uh, in Central and Eastern Europe, surely in Poland, we monitor with uh, great interest and, and some concern developments of event, development of events in major um, democracies of the world in terms of, of keeping stability and peace in the, in the region in particular. So we are focused on Ukrainian issues, uh, but I would say broader, on security of uh, whole region. Um, and here, of course, we are concerned about nominations. Uh, we monitor it closely. I'm fairly optimistic, I would say, as first of all, I have my own experience in uh, transition periods of, right. of various administra American administrations. And it seems that at least with uh, two previous ones, it was always period of, because this will is uh, prevailing, maybe we are able to, to strike a deal with Russia. But then uh, the, 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 the knowledge of the situation, assessment of the situation uh, comes. Uh, and I feel that uh, the, the mainstream politics is uh, quite rational after, after some time. So campaign is campaign, and I truly believe in checks and balances of American policy. Uh, I tend to agree with you about that. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you.